Hey, Brad Squad, Vanessa Contreras here for another round of Squad versus Crew. This time, we're going to test your knowledge on all things immigration. This week is a rematch between show fan Joel and AKA, just call me Joel, and crew member Jeremy Goldberg, AKA J Rhymes. Versus. So the stakes are high. Do you both have your pens and paper ready? Yeah. Good. Then let's get ready to play Immigration 101. How are you two feeling today? Ooh, excited. Are you back for glory? Yeah. Just leave me. Yeah, I'm coming to win, Jeremy. Coming. Let's let's see how much uh, you know. I know this time and. Um, <laughs> All I got to say is congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get started. How long after getting a divorce can you file a VAWA application? Is it A, six months, B, one year, C, two years, or D, five years? Let's see your answers in three, two, one. Okay, the answer is C. So the point goes to our squad. If a marriage ends in divorce because of abuse or cruelty, you can still file a VAWA petition within two years of the end of the marriage. VAWA is the acronym for Violence Against Women Act, but it applies for men as well. So what is the term for a city that has policies in place that limit cooperation with federal immigration agencies like ICE in order to protect immigrants from deportation? Is it A, a sanctuary city, B, a sponsor city, C, a border city, or D, asylum city? Do you guys have your answers down? Let's see in three, two, one. Yes. <laughs> How do you know if that's the right answer? And it is, the correct answer is A. A sanctuary city will not detain undocumented immigrants or release their information to ICE following common police encounters such as traffic violations or reporting a theft. This allows police to focus on more serious crimes and create an environment in which immigrants are less scared to cooperate with law enforcement. In fact, a 2017 study found that sanctuary cities experience a crime rate that is 15% lower than in non-sanctuary cities. Next question. A Stokes interview occurs to determine that an adjustment of status applicant has a what? Is it A, clean criminal record, B, bona fide marriage, C, credible fear of returning to their home country, or D, established permanent residency. Okay, let's see what you guys got in three, two, one. Okay, and the correct answer is B, a bona fide marriage. So, <laughs> The Stokes interview is the second chance for a couple to prove they have a bona fide marriage. If the initial application and interview did not convince USCIS that the marriage was authentic. As Brad always tells us, you have to be able to prove that you live together and have an economic relationship. So get your paperwork in order and be ready to answer a lot of questions about everyday life with your spouse. And we learn about this all the time when we do our bratified marriage games. So if you guys didn't get that one right, I was going to be very, very upset. Okay, which of the following people would apply for an employment authorization document or EAD? Is it A, permanent residence, B, H-1B visa holders, C, U.S. citizens, or D, refugees? Let's see what you've got in three, two, one. Jeremy, why are you not holding up the paper? Oh. <laughs> 
And okay, so the correct answer is D. Refugee. Oh, you're not so, you're not that smart, Joel. Okay. <laughs> An EAD is the general name for a temporary work permit given to non-immigrants <laughs> who are authorized to work in the United States, such as refugees, asylum seekers, or F1 student visa holders. To get an EAD, you must file Form I-765, the Application of Employment Authorization. Let's go on to the next question. Which of the following count as immediate relatives? Is it A? spouses of U.S. citizens, B, unmarried children under 21 years old, C, widows whose citizen spouse filed a petition before their death, or D, all of the above. Let's see your answers in three, two, one. So the squad takes this one. The correct answer is D, all of the above. For purposes of a green card application, you count as an immediate relative if you are married to a U.S. citizen, the unmarried child of a U.S. citizen, or the parent of a U.S. citizen who is under the age of 21. Widows or widowers of U.S. citizens also count as long as the U.S. citizen filed a petition before their death or the widow or widower files a petition within two years of the citizen's death. Let's keep this going. Which of the following countries does not currently qualify for TPS status? Is it A, Ukraine, B, Venezuela, C, Jamaica, or D, Sudan? Let's see what you guys have in three, two, one, Ah, <laughs> the correct answer is C, Jamaica. <laughs> TPS or temporary protected status is a designation granted to nationals of certain countries due to conditions that temporarily prevent them from returning home safely, such as an ongoing armed conflict or environmental disasters. Next question. What kind of visa would you need to come to the U.S. as an au pair? Is it A, J-1 visa, B, F-1 visa, C, a U visa, or D, B-2 visa? Let's see those answers in three, two, one. Okay, and yes, that is the correct answer. A, J-1 visas are granted for study and work-related exchange programs approved by the Bureau of Education and Cultural Affairs at the Department of State. It is used for cultural exchange programs such as au pairs, Fulbright scholars, and camp counselors. Well, that was easy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Jeremy, you're keeping up. You know, I know he's studying. I, I, I'm, I'm keeping up. Studying. You've Let's been see studying. how much I'll trail the next one. How many medical workers in the U.S. are immigrants? Is it A, 500,000, B, 870,000, C, 1.3 million, or D, 2.6 million? What did that woman at Hometown Heroes to go take break, sir? Let's see your answers in three, two, one. Oh my God. Okay, you're both incorrect. Uh, the correct okay. answer is B, 2.6 million. Oh, not bad, not bad. Oh. Yep. According to data from the U.S. Census Bureau tabulated by the Migration Policy Institute, in 2018, there were 2,637,000 immigrant healthcare workers, making up almost 18% of the total healthcare workforce. Immigrants accounted for 28% of all physicians and surgeons, and an additional 563,000 immigrants accounted for 29% of home health and personal care aids. That's mind blowing. Wow. That's awesome. 
right? Mm -hmm. Here we go. We're at our last question. Squad has the lead with six points. Jessica Leamy, Joel making the squad proud as per usual. And for our crew, we're at four points. Our boy J Rhymes. Let's do our last question. Double or nothing. How long before your conditional green card expires do you have to file a petition to remove the conditions on your permanent resident status? Is it A, six weeks, B, 90 days, C, one year, or D, 18 months? Let's see what you guys are working with. Double or nothing in three, two, one. Okay, that is the right answer. B, 90 days. 90 days. Wow. Good job. To remove the conditions on your permanent resident status, you must file a petition within the 90 day period before your two year green card expires. If your conditions are not removed, you will lose your permanent resident status and you will become removable from the United States. Oh man, Jeremy. Another win for the squad. Congratulations, Ooh, Jessica, hey. leave me. Joel, Immigration 101 is always so much fun. Thank you guys for playing with me today. Joel, congrats on another victory. Thank Jeremy. You. Good effort. Hey. hey. So, oh, you thanks know so much. Till next time. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.